Okay, so we're back today, and uh, today we're going to learn all about Visionaire Cipher. So another encryption method. It's better than Caesar Cipher, and um, well, it was used for an extensive period of time in history, and it was much more difficult to crack. Uh, Caesar Cipher is quite simple to undo, but this one is uh, significantly more difficult. It's nothing to be, it's, it's not something that we use today in, in the modern times. Um, it's obviously, it could be uh, broken with computers, uh, but just without a computer, just by, with a person, it's difficult to break. Uh, so let's take a look at how it works. So what we do, what we need first is we need a, uh, a secret sentence. So let's start here and let's call my secret sentence, uh, how about let's just do that, my secret message. Okay, so let's keep it short because yeah, we don't want it, this to be super long. And um, we now need a password. Okay? And our password, let's create one. Uh, it could be anything like, um, how about the word, um, uh, cat, how about the word cat, C-A-T. Okay, so what we do here is we write cat for every, for every letter underneath it. So we go C-A-T, 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 C-A. Notice we couldn't finish the last um, letter, but that's okay. Now what we want to do is we want to figure out what the M transforms into. So what we do here is we need a visionaire table, okay? And this table here, um, what it does, it'll translate letters. So in essence, what we're doing is we are, instead of, in the, remember in the cipher, in the Caesar cipher, we always shifted the same amount. Well, in this case, we're going to be shifting a different amount based on the letters of the password. So if our first uh, word is M and we're shifting it by C, so we got, we'll come up here to M and we come down to C and we notice that it's an O. So because where they intersect. Right? So what we do now is we come over here and we say O. Oh. Then the next one is a Y tr transformed by A. So we come over to the Y and we go to A. And it's transformed by, and the transformation is Y. So we go back. So that's a Y. Then, now here's the interesting part. So this is a space. Um, so in this um, visionary table, there's no space, which isn't a good thing, okay? Uh, but for now, let's just leave the space as a space. So we could say, so if, I'll just write spaces with an underscore. And so this will be an underscore. So now we'll go to S, and it's transformed by C. So we'll go to S, and transform to C would be right there, and that's a U. Then we go to E, transformed by A. E transformed by A is an E. Then we go to C transformed by T. 
C transformed by T is a V. So we go a V. Then we're on R transformed by C. Uh, R, oops, wrong one. Where was that? Oh no, I was on the right place. R transformed by C and you've got a T. And so here would be a T. E transformed by A. Now the thing is, this was perhaps a bad one to choose because, well, A isn't actually transforming anything. So therefore, this is going to end up being uh, an E. A T transformed by T. So let's go back. T transformed by T. Am I in the right place? Looks like an M. Nope. No, hold on. T transformed by T is M. So we'll go M. And... Okay, so um, what I'd like to do is I'd just like to skip over to these S's because uh, they're important. So S transformed by C is going to be uh, U and an S transformed by A because I've already done that one right here and um, that one there. And then this S transformed by A is going to be an S again. So in essence, although I wish I would have picked a different password other than the letter A, my point being is that there's an S here, there's an S here, and there's an S here. And yet, this one's a U, this one's a U, and that one's an S. So they're not all the same. And that makes it very difficult to break. Because now, um, you don't have the same letter being used in the transformation every time. Now, this is the way that the old Visionaire was used in the you know when they first developed it this is how it's used because they had this table printed out and if you and this table is actually really easy to make it's not a secret how to make this right uh, you just put the alphabet on the top and then you put the alphabet on the bottom A to Z A to Z on the top and then um, you just start writing the alphabet out from from A you start from A from B you start from B, from C you start from C, and so on. And you notice that, let's say for this one on C, what do you do when you get to Z? Well, you still have to fill two more in, so you start from A again, right? For the D column that starts from, sorry, for the D row that starts from D, after you get to A, then you go B, C. So essentially, this is pretty easy to, to create anyone can, can create this and all, all you need is a piece of paper. So this is how they used to implement Visionaire to encrypt and decrypt and to and essentially now to, to decrypt you do the opposite, right? So if we were to try and transform this back into the original message you would simply write uh, the password under it again, okay? So let me try and erase here and show you what I mean by that. Oh, I erased too much there, but that's okay. Um, so I would go C-A-T, 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 and okay. So we're going to do this the proper way and essentially you have uh, cat, 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 cat. And so you say, all right, I'm going to start from here and I'm going to transform it by this amount. So you go C, find O, and go over and you get the M. So you write M. Next, you go to A, transform by Y. Go to A, 
transform by y, and you get y. And so that's a y. Then you go to t and trans. So this one um, is a space. So like I said, we're going to have to omit those ones. Uh, so it's, in essence, we don't use any variable here or any, any transformation on the spaces because we don't have a, oops, we don't have a, um, a transformation for a space here. So in essence, you can go backwards as well, right? You can go forwards and backwards with this table. But my suggestion to you is, in order to program this, it actually becomes more difficult to use this visionaire table. So we're not going to use it. But I just wanted to show you how this was done in, in history. But instead, since we have uh, Unicode, and we have ORD and CHR, we don't have to worry about being relegated only to A to Z. After all, what if you have punctuation you want to encrypt? Or perhaps numbers you want to encrypt? Uh, or other special characters you want to encrypt? You can't do it with this. This only does the alphabet. However, with Unicode, you can, you can take the ordinal number of anything and then uh, Add or, add or subtract and use CHR to change it into another character. So let's try this again. Let's try my secret message again, but this time let's try it differently. My secret message. So this is the way we're going to code it. So um, how about this time we'll use uh, the password as uh, we'll use dog for the password instead of cat. Although I should have used dog up here instead of cat because then I wouldn't have had, had an A. Because if you notice, every time I have an A, it uh, doesn't end up actually transforming the, uh, the letter, right? It ends up being the same. But that's okay. It's still confusing. So Anyways, for dog, let's do D-O-G, and let's figure out what the numbers are for D-O-G. So let's open a terminal here, and let's go IPython, and let's go uh, ordinal of, and let's just use, let's just use lowercase. I know I'm, I'm using uppercase there, but that's 100. Let's go ordinal. Uh, o, 111, and finally G is 103. So 100, 111, 103, okay? So 100, uh, 111, and 103. Now, what we do is we'll cut these guys like this. I should have actually spaced them out more. So may maybe that's a, probably a good idea because th it's going to be really squished now. Let's actually, let's g give us more room because we have to write three digits under each letter. So uh, let's try again. My and then we've got uh, space and then S E C R E T and so on. So now let's apply let's apply D O G D O G D O G and so on. I'm not going to do the rest. I think you guys get the idea. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these values here. 100 one 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 oh three one hundred one 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 oh three one hundred one 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 oh three now what I do is I'll take the ordinal of M and add one hundred to it. So the ordinal of M would be 
Let's do that. Ordinal of m is 109. And so when I add 100 to it, it's going to be 209. So now I've got 209. OK? So at this point, um, let's, do it. let's do it for a couple more. Let's go the, the y. So the ordinal of y. Oh, hold on. OK. Ordinal of y is 121. So then we'll go 121 plus, uh, what was it? 111. And that gives us 232. So this would be 232. Let's do one more. Space and 103. So ordinal of a space is 32 plus 103. That's 135. So now we have here 135. Now all we got to do is convert these numbers back into a uh, character. So we'll go CHR209. CHR209. And because we don't have to worry about it going over 255 because we're using Unicode, which goes, I think, up to like a million or something. So now that's going to be capital N. So this is now a capital N. 232 is, oops, that's an E with an accent on it, like that. And 135 is well. Looks like that is some. I, I actually can't pronounce that character, but uh, it's got an escape character in the front of it. Backslash x87. So backslash x87. In essence, now um, this is your encrypted. Uh, string now. And in order to undo it, you simply write DOG underneath it, and then you write down the values of DOG 100. Now, when I say write down, you're obviously going to do this in a program, right? In a loop. And then instead of adding this to this, right, you subtract. Now you subtract to get back to the original. This is to decrypt it, in, in essence, right? Because we got the n here by adding these two. These two numbers were added to, uh, to get 209. OK, so well, we're adding, actually, uh, the m and the 100 to get 209. Which is, a, which is a capital N. Okay, so all these were, by the way, uh, were lowercase. Okay, so I'd like you guys to write the Visionaire encrypt and decrypt and um, try and use the same method that we used last time with the command line arguments for writing and reading. And there's one other thing that I wanted to show you, okay? And that is, in this case, you're going to have to get the user to type in a password. So, obviously, like we don't want to do we don't want to do this for a password. Uh, we don't want to go input. You know, we don't want to say password equals input. Enter your enter the password. If we do that, then look what happens. So let's just make it look prettier here. And, and now the password, let's say, is dog. Well, unfortunately now, if you type it, anybody who is watching you type can see your password. That's not good. So the way to fix this is you import something called 
uh, I think it's pass. No, it's not pass. Is it? Uh, hold on, I gotta remember what it was. Okay, aha, I remembered what it was. Okay, so it's import uh, get pass. Import get pass. There it is. So then you would do something like, uh, let's say p, let's say p is the password, equals get pass dot get pass. And then you'd go bracket, and then you'd say, enter the password. Now when you do this, now I'm going to type in dog, dog. Now you notice it looks like I typed in nothing. But when I hit enter, it doesn't even show you the little, you know, the little round dots. Because that's actually bad. Because you don't want a person to know how many characters are in your password. Many times I've had students say to me, uh, it's not working, I'm typing, but nothing's happening, so it's broken. No, it's actually working, it's just that nothing is showing up, and that's deliberate. So now, you see, if I type in P, I get dog. I, and, I, and I told you what I typed. If I type it again, uh, if, I type, if I do this again, and I type something different, you can't tell what I just typed. But the variable that it's stored in knows what I typed, as you can see. So if, if, you, if you want to know more about get pass, after you import it, you can do uh, help get pass. And uh, you can scroll down here and take a look at it. Uh, the ones, there's really only one thing that I'm using in here, and that's this one, get pass. OK? So uh, there you go. So now you guys are able to write Visionaire the proper way, and you know the proper way of uh, asking for the password. So pause the video now, and good luck. So my solution here. Uh, essentially opens the first file in the command line here at, for reading and we read the whole file to a string then we close the file and we're not using with open as here uh, then let's convert this to Python 3 and it says enter the password uh, now we're using get pass. Now we can actually type that here in this case. So we could say, for example, uh, enter password. Okay, and then we don't need this line. So that's kind of nice because get pass is not going to show the password as we type it. We have an empty string and we have an index. Now, we might not need that index. I'll show you later why not. We're going to iterate through the string to encrypt or decrypt, whatever the case may be. And um, we're going to grab one letter at a time. Uh, then, if it's encrypt, we're going to add right here. And if it's a decrypt, then we're going to subtract. So our usage is up here. You can see how uh, our last uh, argument is encrypt or decrypt. Now you could change that to an E or a D if you don't want to type as much, but it doesn't matter. Um, so essentially here, what's different from Caesar cipher is that instead of adding or subtracting by a set amount, we're adding and subtracting by the ordinal of the letter from the password. So the password uh, letter PI, the I is changing. So we start at zero. And then after we go through each letter, we're incrementing I. And when we get to the end of the password, let's start at the beginning here. However, I have to say 
This will work, but in my opinion, there's a more elegant way of doing this. And we could actually say plus p. You could see it right there on line 18 above. When I highlight it, it becomes a little more difficult to see. But it's the line above here, line 18. It says p x mod len p. So think about that for a second. You see, as you, I maybe I should kind of draw this out to show you what's going on. So as you, let's say you're, let's say you're uh, my space secret, and now your uh, password is dog dog, right? Okay, so these are index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, your password is, uh, let's go back to the code here. It was pxlenp. So px mod len p. So x, this is x here, 0 to 8. And now when you mod it by len p, now what's p? Let's say it's, let's say it's dog. So the len of our password is 3. So that 3, then, when you go 0 mod 3, well, you get 0. When you go 1 mod 3, you get 1, right? So that makes sense. So that's going to be the letter uh, P0 and then P1. But what happens when you get to here, to the fourth one? Well, 4 mod 3. 3 goes into 4 one times. What's the remainder? 1. And that's perfect. Actually, uh, this one, it's the one after, right? Because our indices for DOG is 0, 1, 2. So, so this one's the next one. And so in essence, 3 mod 3 equals 0. So now you're back to the beginning again. You're back to here. And then for this one here, you're, you're there. You understand? So because this was DOG, and then this one is D again. So this is index 0. So this, if we use this here on line 18, then we don't need these three lines, 22, 23, and 24. So that's kind of cool. Well, I hope you enjoyed the solution to this. And uh, this will be the last lesson of this course. Bye-bye. Hope you enjoyed it.